Hello and welcome to Nikolai's genetics lessons and today I have prepared two questions for you and the first um, problem is two different strains of Drosophila, strain A and strain B, each has a recessive mutation that results in abnormally bright red eye color and uh, wild type flies have brownish red eye color. When a homozygous strain A fly is crossed with homozygous strain B fly, all of the progeny have the dominant wild type eye color. The most likely genetic information for the results given above is, and uh, here five uh, answers to choose from, uh, just about maybe two or three days ago, I got a question from one of my subscribers, and the question uh, was about uh, similar to this question, how to albino people, and we know that albino um, color caused by recessive genetic disorder may have normal, phenotypically normal child. For the person who sent me this question, this was a mystery. For example, if we uh, think that mother would be homozygous recessive, father would be homozygous recessive, 100% of the progeny also would be homozygous recessive. So how come that 100% uh, of the progeny are phenotypically normal? And here is my explanation. Uh, here we have a model with one gene. So one gene has two defective copies, two defective alleles, mother has two defective alleles, father has two defective alleles, and 100% of the progeny also would be uh, defective for this trait, or would be albino. But uh, let's return to our problem, uh, just like uh, in this example, uh, when two albino people may have uh, normal progeny, this can be explained with two gene theory. For example, if we would take uh, into account such situation when the trait is caused by two genes. For example, we have gene A and B. Strain A can be, for example, small a, small a, and capital B, capital B. And strain B can be capital A, capital A, and small b, small b. Imagine that uh, this gene A that uh, in diploid organism is uh, represented by two alleles uh, should produce normal variant of the protein and gene P would be enzyme that would change conformation of this protein so it would be active. This person cannot produce normal protein, but can produce normal um, enzyme. On the other hand, second person can produce normal protein, but this normal protein still can be activated because this person has um, two defective alleles uh, for the enzymes that have to change this protein. And if we cross these two people or According to our question, this can be two flies. 100% of the progeny, as you see, would get one dominant allele A from parent 2. There is no choice. Progeny only can get one dominant allele from the parent 2 and would get one recessive allele from the parent 1. And for the gene B, 100% uh, of the progeny would get dominant allele B from first parent and recessive allele B for the second parent. So those parent 1 uh, wouldn't be able to produce pigment just like um, in our example brownish pigment uh, and parent 2 also wouldn't be produce brownish pigment 100% of their progeny would be uh, of the wild phenotype. So this is explanation with 
to jeans model. And I also want you to pay attention uh, to such words as uh, when homozygous strain A, and as you see strain uh, A uh, is homozygous, it is homozygous for the gene A, it is homozygous for the gene B. For the gene A it is homozygous recessive, for the gene B it is homozygous dominant. And parent 2 or strain B also homozygous. For the gene A it is homozygous dominant, for the gene B it is homozygous recessive. So now we can choose our answer and as you see the correct answer would be answer C. Uh, we call such situation epistasis when one gene can be normal but another abnormal gene may hide effect of the normal gene and the same situation with the second parent here. So next question the progeny mentioned above were allowed to breed among themselves. What is the phenotypic ratio expected among the offspring? So here we have parental generation. This is parent 1, this is parent 2, and this is the progeny. Basically this question asks us uh, if we self-cross F1 generation, so if we would have one parent that is going to be heterozygous for both genes and we cross with another parent that is going to be heterozygous for both genes. Uh, what phenotypic ratio we expect among the offspring? And here five answers to choose from. Uh, try to solve this problem on your own first. I think this is much easier than the first question. So as you see, this is classical uh, dehybrid cross, but instead of making large uh, table with 16 cells, I would use forked line method. And this would be much easier. So uh, basically what we have here, we have gene A and we have gene B. This is two independent genes, probably on the separate chromosomes, because nothing said that these genes are linked, meaning are on the same chromosome. So, so we can make uh, two simple Punnett squares instead of one large. So let's consider gene A first, and one parent is heterozygous, another parent also heterozygous, and when we build a Punnett square, we can tell the probable um, genotypes and phenotypes in the progeny. So capital A, capital A here, capital A, small a here, capital A, small a here, and small a, small a here. According to the Spanish square, uh, three quarters of the progeny would have wild phenotype. I would use green color to designate uh, wild phenotype and as you see one quarter would show a mutated phenotype or in our case uh, this would result in mutated protein so one quarter and uh, three quarters let's now consider gene B that would make uh, another protein or enzyme and enzyme is also protein and for the gene B we have the same situation one parent is heterozygous and the second parent is also heterozygous so when we build a simple Punnett square we are going to get the same results as in previous example for the gene A both parents are heterozygous so uh, basically, uh, we have here capital B, capital B, capital B, small b, capital B, small b, and small b, small b. One more time, uh, as you see, according to this Punnett square, uh, three quarters of the progeny would be would produce a normal enzyme, and one quarter 
wouldn't be able to produce normal enzyme. Now, uh, when we have this information, so one quarter here and also three quarters here. Now, when we have this information, we can easily solve this problem. And in order to solve this problem, I would use forked line method. So, basically, for the gene A, we have two variants. We have variants that three quarters would produce a normal phenotype. So those uh, we have here two genotypes, but uh, this two genotypes would make one normal phenotype. Another choice that uh, one quarter of the all progeny for the gene A would have defective phenotype. So that means wouldn't be able to produce a normal uh, gene A because two alleles would be defective, so wouldn't be able to produce normal protein. As for the second gene B, we also have two variants. The first variant, we would have a normal uh, protein produced or normal enzyme, and probability would be three quarters, but also we have one quarter probability that uh, both alleles would be mutated and quarter of the progeny wouldn't be able to produce a normal enzyme. So now, as for the for those uh, who has uh, recessive allele A, homozygous recessive, so let me put small a, small a here, and capital A, small a, and capital A, capital A here. And basically, also let me put two variants, capital B, capital B, and capital B, small b, and here we have small b, small b. So now uh, also those um, animals, in our case flies, that has defective allele A, two defective alleles, still can may have a normal um, gene B, two normal alleles or at least one normal allele and one recessive allele. So according to this Punnett square and probability would be three quarters. And also we have a situation when one quarter uh, progeny would be a small b, small b, and this is going to be one quarter. And now we can tell uh, all the probable uh, genotypes and phenotypes. Three quarters multiplied by three quarters, because this is two independent probabilities. And here we have, let me separate. So this is gene A and this is gene B. So uh, for the gene A, three quarters would be, would produce normal phenotype. And when we multiply this to independent probabilities, we can tell that uh, if we multiply three quarters by three quarters, we can tell that uh, nine sixteenths would be of the normal phenotype, so would produce brown red eye color. As for the variant when for the gene A uh, flies would be normal, but for the gene B would be abnormal. Uh, this would give us probability three quarters multiplied by one quarter would give us three over sixteenths, and this is going to be uh, flies 
that uh, cannot produce uh, normal uh, product for the gene B so would have uh, red eyes and here we have normal wild phenotype and as for this uh, variant we have about one quarter of the progeny that is going to be defective for the gene A but uh, would be phenotypically normal for the gene B whether it can be homozygous dominant or heterozygous probability is three quarters but because uh, as you see uh, for the gene A the progeny would be homozygous recessive it wouldn't be able to produce normal color so uh, probability here would be 3 over 16 and the last variant here we have one quarter probability that the progeny would have two defective allele A and one quarter probability that the progeny would have two defective alleles for the gene B. This gives us probability 1 over 16. So all these variants would produce red pigment and this one would produce wild phenotype brownish red pigment so our ratio would be 9 to 3 plus 3 6 plus 1 7 7 plus 9 16 16 over 16 is mm, 1 16 divided by 16 is 1 or 100 percent so our ratio would be 9 of the wild phenotype to 7 of the uh, defective phenotype uh, with red eyes. So let's return to our problem. Now we can choose the correct answer and as you see the correct answer is answer E. We would have 9. We can expect 9 wild type red uh, brownish color to 7 bright red eyes in the progeny. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. Please write your comments, questions if you have any. And see you in the next video. Goodbye.